whether you stop coloring your hair whilst you're trying to get pregnant or not depends on various factors and this is something that I really want to explore with you today it was a question that one of my patients asked this morning and I thought you know many people would have this question the first thing that I want to say in terms of this and many other exposures that you may be you know surrounded by is that for everything that you can control there are a multitude probably in the thousands in the hundreds of thousands in the millions that you cannot so when it comes to this question I have two ways of reacting to the response one is it's best if you don't do it and as you can see I decided that I no longer wanted to color my hair <laughs> <laughs> and that was for purely just maintenance and getting over the whole maintenance you know of being a woman situation at this stage in my in my evolution but for many women and I know that when I was trying to get pregnant and and I was going through this very treatment I absolutely wanted to do everything I could to reduce the exposures that I had control over because I knew that there were so many that I had no control over. However, I was absolutely not ready to not color my hair. And I've had gray hair in like very visible gray hair since I was about 19 years of age. So a long time. But the reality of it is this, for some couples who have been struggling to conceive or take a pregnancy to term, for many years and want to do everything that they can, this may be something to enhance and reduce the exposures that you are surrounded by because hair color is toxic and there are some more natural ways and this is what I did. I you know, started using henna and I started using other things that were deemed to be more natural than your standard everyday chemical laden hair colors. If you're a hairdresser as well, this is extremely important. It's actually more relevant for hairdressers than it is for people who color their hair because for hairdressers, you're constantly in those fumes if you're a colorist. And in those instances, we've had situations where we've had to tell people change jobs. Um, not always feasible, not always very easy, but it can make the difference between having a baby and not having a baby. And that goes for every single occupational exposure that you might encounter. So those are some variances on that thing too, because you know, for somebody who colors their hair maybe twice a year versus someone like me who had to color their hair every month, otherwise the gray started to come because I have very dark hair typically or used to. Um, it, it, it's a different situation, right? So you need to consider it under those that context. But also the other thing about it is how does it make you feel and does that make a difference on your journey? Because we also know that going through fertility challenges, miscarriages, it, it's tough, you know, and Sometimes those little things that we do in either our appearance or how we show up in general make a difference. And if coloring your hair makes you feel like you can keep going another day, well, girl, go color your hair, right? Like that, that is absolutely my recommendation there. Um, for many of our patients, you know, one of the recommendations that I've made that many have kind of decided to kind of take on um, in that period of going through treatment was to go back to, if you just color for fashion, to go back to your natural color and just keep it that way for the duration in which you are trying to get pregnant and have a baby and so on. And that can work too. But it depends on you and it depends on what makes you feel good and it depends on how you want to experience and how the things you tell yourself about what your hair means to you, right? I know that I've had so many things over the years that were associated with the hair and you know all of that, um, whereas now I kind of don't really care as much, but you may. And so you need to make these decisions based on what's actually going to be good for you. And also, what are some other lifestyle exposures that perhaps are equally damaging and that you need to address, that you can address, that are easier than this. And sometimes layering your 
changes and adjustments that you make over time makes a very big difference because you might you don't want to be you know kind of building Rome in a day here as well it might be that this month you focus on lifestyle factors that are not to do with your hair and it might be that in six months from now you decide that you want to tackle that area so also take that into account it's like timing matters how you do things matter how you feel about yourself matters and that is going to be an incredible way to start to make better decisions for your fertility as well so i hope that helps and until next time bye for now